This section of your DVD demonstrates the post form method for installing a Koran undermount sink into a post form laminate countertop. Before you begin installation, inspect the sink for any damage. Check both the rim and corners of the bowls. Check the sink rim for flatness. In rare cases, additional straightening may be needed. If needed, place a wood spacer block between the bowls on the underside of the sink to provide additional straightening. Permanently fasten the block in place with hot melt glue or seam adhesive once desired straightness is achieved. Measure the depth of the rim. It should be 3 quarter inch, the same thickness as standard 3 quarter inch particle board substrate. If the rim is thicker than 3 quarter inch, use a template and top bearing router bit to trim to 3 quarters. If using 5 8 inch substrate, remember to trim the rim to 5 8 inch thickness. Place the countertop upside down on a sheet of particle board or other hard, flat and level surface. Make sure it is lying completely flat. Be aware of no drip edges. Decide the correct position for the sink. Mark your center line on the underside of the countertop and then screw your pre-made template securely to the underside of the countertop in the required position. Make sure to use the correct size screws to avoid going through the laminate on the top of the countertop. This template will allow you to remove approximately 2 inches to 2 and a half inches of particle board substrate from the back of the laminate, leaving just the laminate and a thin layer of particle board behind. Use a plunge router with either a template guide and a 3 quarter to 1 inch wide straight cut bit or a 3 quarter to 1 inch wide straight cut bit with top bearing. Set the depth of the bit to approximately a 16 inch less than the combined thickness of your substrate and template. In other words, you want to leave about a 16 inch of substrate remaining on the back of the laminate. Run the router around the template and hog out all of the wood. A thin layer of particle board should remain. Carefully wipe or spray remaining particle board with a solvent such as a lacquer thinner, toluene or other adhesive remover. Be careful to keep the solvent away from the outer edge of the cutout. Let it soak in for a few minutes. Use a sharp 3 quarter inch to 1 inch wide chisel to remove the remaining particle board. Clean remaining adhesive off back of laminate with a solvent and clean rag. A wire brush can also be useful. Spray clean with compressed air. Clean the sink rim and back of laminate with denatured alcohol and a clean white rag. Prepare a solid surface seam adhesive cartridge. Use a color that closely matches the color of the sink. Apply one continuous bead around the rim of the sink. The bead should be applied about an eighth inch back from the inner front edge of the sink and should be a quarter inch to three eighths inch in thickness. Turn the sink upside down and place onto the back of the laminate in the sink cutout check inside for seepage all around the sink rim. Place a little weight evenly on the sink to provide pressure while adhesive cure around 10 pounds per bowl will be sufficient. Leave to cure for 30 to 45 minutes depending on brand of adhesive and the climate. After adhesive has cured, check the height of the sink rim. Any high spot should be sanded flush with the underside of the particle board. Squeeze silicone into the gap between the sink and substrate. Try to completely fill the gap between the sink and the substrate. Attach wood support strips with screws or glue and staples to support underside of sink rim. Do not place strips where they may interfere with faucet placement. Turn the countertop over. Using a router, remove the laminate covering the sink. Several options are available for the final trimming of the laminate. You may use a standard router with a 7 to 8 degree bevel bit with tapered nylon bottom bearing. You may use a solid surface roundover bit with tapered nylon bottom bearing set at the correct height. The preferred method is a tilt based trim router with a quarter inch straight cut bit with bottom bearing. Simply adjust the angle of the base to 8 degrees. 
This is two degrees more than the angle of the sink walls, which are typically six degrees. Sand the edge of the laminate and upper wall of the sink with a random orbital sander. Bring the edge to a matte finish, usually a 60 micron or 220 grit, though a 150 grit would also be suitable. Sand until laminate and sink are smooth and no seam can be felt. Use a file to slightly bevel and soften the edge of the laminate. Lightly buff the entire sink with a maroon Scotch-Brite pad. If faucet hole placement is known, drill holes using a one and a half inch hole saw. Place a bead of silicone around the faucet hole seal ring wall and insert into hole. Wipe up excess silicone. If faucet hole placement is not known, be sure to include these along with the installation instructions with the countertop when the top is delivered to the job site. Please note that sinks with integrated faucet decks do not require faucet hole seal rings. Your sink is now installed and ready to be delivered to the customer.